director. Um, and I just want to say welcome. And if you have, if for the people who have been with us uh, week after week with Michaels, welcome back. And if you just want to hang out with us tonight uh, for the hour, um, you're more than welcome to do so. Um, just a little, um, I'll just throw it to Rita because she can throw it back to me later, but I'll pass it to Rita so she can actually introduce herself, but have a wonderful class. Have any questions, please put it in the chat room and I will answer um, right away. If I don't, please feel free to connect with us on social media and we can further answer your questions. So I'm going to throw it to Rita right now and she'll introduce herself. Hi guys, my name is Rita Panula. I am the design director for Impress Art. I was busy stalking everybody's backgrounds. <laughs> it's so nice to see some of you. So we have some new faces. We have some oldies but goodies. Um, we are going to go back to basics today. Uh, on every Tuesday and Thursday, Jen and I do a Facebook Live where we go through product, tutorials, and some tools. So if you're interested in something like that, you could definitely visit Impress Art on Facebook and join in on the fun. But I always like to go back to my beginner classes because I always pick up something new that maybe I didn't hear because I have that selective hearing where I hear <laughs> what I want to hear and then I go back and I absorb everything else. So beginner classes are always fun. And if you're new, you'll no notice that all of my creative friends here make an amazing metal stamping community. So that's basically what it comes down to. We're all a community of makers and we all learn from one another. So I'm super excited to teach this class today. Um, and if this is your second class, a refresher course. Um, so I think that we will get started. Jen, what do you think? Yeah, I'm ready. Is everyone time? ready? Thumbs up if you're ready. All right, Lynn says, hey. Brenda is ready. All right, so I'm going to bring you over to my bench block yep. and I will mute it. So in case I fall over all of these yes, wires, so you won't hear me. So I see a lot of people asking again, Tuesdays and Thursdays on Facebook, we go live at 1230 Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're an hour ahead of this class. Um, so 1230, Eastern Standard Time, Tuesday, Thursday. So you'll catch us again on next Thursday. Um, so we're in holiday mode in Impress Art. So come on over if you're ready to start making holiday gifts for Christmas and Hanukkah. So. My cat might make an appearance um, on this live. <laughs> okay, let's see. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so excuse me, I'm in the new studio, so it's um, a little dark in here. The lighting um, doesn't seem to be working all that well today with this, so are we good? Can everybody see the block? Yep, it looks good, Rita. Uh, okay. All right, so we're going to be doing a jumble necklace, and what I want to do just to get started, more of an icebreaker. We're not gonna take out our sticker, um, sticker guides yet. We're just gonna take a, uh, let's see, a scrap that we might have laying around. And I have one right here, okay? And I just want you to get used to hitting that stamp with different sources to see how, let's bend this down a little bit how your font looks different from when we really give it an aggressive hit to when we give it a light hit. Or for those of us who wanted to take this class, bought all the, all, all the tools and then left it in the craft corner and haven't touched it yet. So we're gonna break the ice by picking up the hammer. So remember guys, your hammer should always be on your dominant side. So I'm a righty, my hammer is always on the right side of my block. My font set is always on my left. The last thing you wanna do is line up your stamp with your dominant hand and then switch it. Cause what happens is we move it, it gets all wonky and we don't get a really nice clean and crisp impression. So pull out, it could be A, B, C, D. It could be any four letter word of your choice. It could be love. 
Okay, and I just want you to hit your first stamp at a very light, a very light hit. Okay. Then with your second, now remember, we're not lining up. We're not getting too crazy with it. I'm going to take my O and I'm going to give it more of a medium hit. Okay. My V, I'm going to take out and give a hard hit, heavy. And my E, I'm going to go a little bit heavier than that. I'm going to be aggressive with it. We could all get aggressive, right, ladies and gentlemen? So I'm going to take, take some, some frustration out. <laughs> there you go. And I'm really going to overhit it. So now this is a little exercise to see how your font looks when you're hitting it at different, um, what would you call that, Jen? I'm a tongue tied today. Oh, different forces. Um, different everyone's forces. force is slightly different depending on what muscle you use when you swing your hammer. There you go. So I'm just gonna use my stamp enamel really quick. Take a dry household paper towel, dab it, and then lightly wipe. So you are gonna see the difference in the forces. So my L is nice and clean and crisp, okay? My O is more of a bolder O. My V and my E, you can barely see the lines inside of my E. That's where I was super aggressive with it. Um, when you over stamp, metal spreads. Metal spreads anyway when you're hammering into it. But when you're using a stamp like this Arcadia set, where we have, let's pull out that E where let's see if you guys could see jen could you see that i'm very blurry on my screen um it's a little blurry is that better mm -hmm. so, so odd today so you see there's a lot of line and a lot of detail in the e when you are aggressive with the force that you use it spreads the metal out and you see less of that, the, the less of the line, the less of the detail in that stamp. So it's basically learning your font, learning the force behind what you have in your hands, that force that you're going to use behind the hammer. Some people really like, you know, being forceful with it and having those bold lines. I personally, it's personal preference. I like more of a clean, crisp line where I could see all of that detail. All right, so we are going to start. Rita, um, as you go through, as we start stamping, can you go through each of the tools and yes, tell us I'm a little bit about that them? Now. That's what I'm gonna do now. Perfect. Okay, so when you're metal stamping, you need two very important things. The first one is your steel block, okay? You'll notice that underneath my steel block is a rubber pad, okay? This is a rivet pad that I put underneath my block just because I'm in my home. I have animals. I have kids. I have a husband who don't really want to hear my hammer all day long. So that kind of deadens the blow of the noise, okay, of my steel hitting my steel block, all right? So it's a nice and sturdy surface. Please don't stamp on a wood block. Please don't stamp on granite, marble, or a glass table. All right, steel block is the way to go. The second tool, I'm gonna pull this up just a tiny bit, that you're gonna need to successfully metal stamp is a brass head hammer. Okay, sometimes when we're home, you know, we say, oh, you know, Let's not go for the hammer. I have a household hammer. The difference between stamping with a brass head hammer and stamping with a steel hammer is a whole lot. If you take that steel hammer that you have at home, your hardware, your husband's hammer, or a hammer that you have in, in a toolkit, and you hit a steel stamp, one of two things or three things might happen. One, you could damage your stamp. Two, your steel on steel makes a spark. 
and that's never good. The third thing is, is that you're not going to get a nice and even impression. You're going to get a ghost impression because when you hit steel on steel, it bounces. The brass is nice and soft. So it absorbs that shock of hitting that steel. So you have a really nice and even impression. I know a lot of us have, that have started metal stamping have taken just a regular steel hammer and they're kind of getting an impression and then a lighter impression up top, sort of like that. We call that a ghost impression. That's because when you're hitting your stamp with a steel hammer, it bounces, leaving a double impression, okay? So the best thing that you could do is get a hammer with a brass head, all right? Then we have our enamel marker. And the most frequent question we have about these markers are, is, is it like a Sharpie? So Sharpies are great, guys. I recommend using a Sharpie when I am marking my metal or I'm measuring something, but I do not suggest using a Sharpie to color in your letters. This is a water-based enamel marker, okay? This enamel marker is formulated to sit inside of your stamped impressions, okay? It creates a web inside of it. It does not come out. It won't come out with any kind of antibacterial or overwashing. If we're, you know, we live in an age now where antibacterial and washing our hands is just nonstop. Um, and I could tell you that my bracelets have been on, actually took them off yesterday, but my bracelets have been on since we were shut down back in May, Jen, when we were home. We were home. Uh, March, home? actually. March. March. So even longer. March. Oh my God. I, I'd like to say May because I'm just, I'm still in a state of shock. But I've had them on the entire time I was home, cleaning, cooking. Um, I went to the beach with them and the enamel still stayed inside of my impressions. Oh. Okay. So definitely um, the stamp enamel is the way to go. Uh, your Sharpie will be pulled out with any kind of alcohol, um, any kind of um, essential oil, any kind of antibacterial, that any kind of alcohol spray will pull the Sharpie right out of your impression. Mm -hmm. All right. The next thing is obviously your font set. So the font set that we're using today is a three millimeter Arcadia set. Okay, I know if you've taken classes with us before for Michaels, we've used Austin. Austin is an um, exclusive font that uh, I had come up with for Michaels. So you could only buy exclusively at Michaels. Um, but today we're gonna be using more of a clean, sophisticated, I like it because it reminds me of the old school engraving on my mother's charm bracelets. So this is how, right? Right, Jen, am I right? This is no, just totally. very clean and simple. And it just reminds me of my childhood and the bracelet that I'm still asking her for to this day. So one day she'll gift it to me. Um, so we're gonna use this font today. With this font, okay, it is wider than your normal three millimeter font. It's wide, it's a straight up and down font. So you're gonna to need to use a little bit more finesse when stamping this than you would as with Juniper or Sans Serif or Melody or any other fonts that you might have at home. But since you've been working with Austin, if this is your second class, you guys will be pros at this at no time. My suggestion when it comes to fonts is to buy one font and really learn your tools, okay? Our uppercase fonts always come with six design stamps in it. Our lowercase fonts always come with the punctuation to go with that, okay? We're also gonna be using Arcadia numbers today. And remem remember, it's zero to eight. Your six doubles as your nine. But we'll go into that when, I, um, when we go and uh, stamp that on a tag, okay? You're also going to use two needle nose round, uh, chain nose pliers, jump rings, and a chain. We're also gonna go into 
matting and polishing a little bit. So I'm gonna actually talk about this a little first. Um, you have your sanding blocks. Your sanding blocks have two sides. You have your medium and you have your coarse. If you have these at home and you have a pen handy, I always like to write, or a marker, not an enamel marker, but a Sharpie marker. I always like to mark the bottom of my sanding block. My medium on both sides is my matte finish, okay? My coarse on both, end, both sides of that block, okay, is for my ends. It's for sanding down your ends. Um, depending on the metal, you never really wanna take your coarse side unless you want a really rough matte finish. If you want to matte your blanks, and what I mean by that is, I'm just gonna take one and show you. So this is how they come out of your packaging. These are the premium aluminum blanks. If you want something more matte or a satin finish, you're gonna take your medium side and you're gonna run it up and down your entire blank, okay? Now I'll only do one side so you could see. Does everybody see that? How it's shiny on one side, matte on the other? Your medium, your medium sides will make it matte. You should, if you want a matte finish, matte your blank before you stamp onto it, okay? Your buffing block is usually white, Mine are always gray, and I keep on using it until they really just fall apart. I've had this one for about a month and a half, and it's still going. Um, and this block is to shine up your metal. So I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. So you could see how shiny that is compared to that matte finish, all right? And you could shine that up. Your buffing block is gonna take very small uh, surface scratches off your metals. All right. And your sticker guides, last but not least. Let's grab some of those out. So, these sticker guide books are actually one of the best products we have because these sticker guide books are going to, I call it my Bible, okay? It's the hand stamper's Bible. You're going to learn from these sticker guides how to line and space all of your fonts. If you're interested in doing patterns, there's clear grids to do a mandala pattern or round stickers to stamp around your desk, all right? So today we're gonna utilize, do I have any left in here? Today we're gonna utilize our straight stickers. Jen, any questions? Um, not yet, um, I'm answering yet. a question about the basic letter set. Um, and then the buffing blocks, someone asked, do you use them regardless of the project or only when you um, want a matte finish, but we do have two buffing blocks. We have a matte finish buffing block that creates a matte finish, but then our high polishing block, which is the white one, uh, polishes up and makes it shiny bright after you're done stamping. So Tara asks, I see Tara's, let's see. Oh. Uh, do you buff before and after? Sometimes they come up, Jen. Sometimes I can see them, sometimes oh. I can't. Yep. No problem. Um, do you buff before and after you stamp? Tara, I like to do it after I stamp or while I'm in the process of stamping. It really depends. Um, are the stickers reusable? So, Suzanne, I'm not supposed to, I, I, I get, I'm a horrible salesperson, number one. Okay. Um, you could reuse your stickers, your straight stickers, if you use a mechanical pencil or a pencil or an erasable pen, providing you don't um, damage the sticker by going over it with the stamp. All right. So I think we got all the questions. 
Yes. Okay. So far, so yes, you did. Edith. Yep. Okay. All right. So we are going to start. We're going to start with. Now, I'm not sure what was available at your Michaels, so I'm just going to go over this really quick. Um, we have a one inch round aluminum, okay? Um, if you went shopping, there are some with holes, some without holes. What I like to do with the one inch blanks without the holes is I like to put my hole at the top after I stamp. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do today. If you're using a blank with a hole, that's totally fine. I'll show you how to line up your sticker guide so you're stamping in the center using that hole. All right, so we're going to take your one inch disc, you're gonna put it on your block. All right, and I'm gonna use my larger sticker guides today. You have smaller ones in your sticker guide book. I'm gonna use my, la my larger today because I'm using my larger block, all right? Now, if you're working with a one inch round with a hole in it, what you're going to do is you're going to take that orange center line, put it right to the center hole, center of that hole, and bring it down. Depending on how and where you want your font, I mean, it's basically personal preference. You could design it any way you can. That's the beauty about these stickers. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down, about quarter way down, and then secure it to my blank and my block. Hey, okay? Rita. Yes. Kathy is asking, does it matter which side of the disc you stamp on? Okay, good question, Kathy. So if you look at your blank really close, you'll see that one side has more of a finished edge as opposed to the other. Can you guys see that, how that doesn't look so finished? But this is more of a rounded. So yes, there is a right and a, not a wrong, it really, it depends, but there is a front and a back, okay? So now, for those of us who don't have holes on our blank, I'm gonna show you to do the same thing. You're gonna take your sticker guide. You're just gonna bring it down, okay? And I'm gonna place it on my block. I'm gonna make sure that my sticker, now mine's longer than if some of you are using um, the stamp guides book, they're shorter, which is perfectly fine. They both will secure your blank to your block. Okay, and I'm gonna come in with my pencil or my pen, okay? And I'm gonna utilize my black hash marks. Now, if you were using a lower case, I would tell you to go in between your black and orange hash marks. Because we're using an upper case, and this is a very wide three millimeter, I'm gonna tell you to go and use your black hash marks. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna put in my initials here that I want on my piece. So I'm gonna go with an S, an E, a P, and an S, okay? And that is Sean, Elvis, Priscilla, and Samantha. So those are my husband, my daughter, and my animals. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so now we also have that three pack, that magnificent three pack of hearts, okay? So I'm gonna use the smallest heart, this one right here, and these are my favorite. And anyone watches our lives, you know that I'm constantly using this tiny heart and I'm constantly using the dot stamp, okay? Today I'm gonna retire the dot stamp for tonight and I'm gonna replace it with my mini heart, okay? So I'm gonna come in on my sticker and I'm gonna draw in my hearts in between my initials on my orange lines, okay? Then I'm gonna come in with my stamp. Now remember guys, 
you always want, let me pull this back a little bit. You want your stamp, I'm writing. So you, I want my stamp in my left hand, okay? I then take, I always have my hammer in my right hand, all right? Never switch hands after you've lined it all up. I know automatically you're gonna to wanna to do everything if you're a righty, you're gonna to wanna to do everything with a right. If you're lefty, you wanna do everything with a left. So remember, your stamp in your non-dominant hand, your hammer in your dominant hand. So you're gonna take this flat, okay? You're going to lightly drag it, lightly drag it, and line up the letter on your stamp with the corresponding letter on your sticker guide. If you're having problems finding your center, this is where your Sharpie comes in. Take your marker. I don't know if it's, you could, it's, it's very dark in here apparently, I can't really see. Um, you're gonna take your Sharpie and just draw a line down the center of it, just like that. Okay? And I like to do that to all of my stamps. So when I'm ready to line up, do you see how my black, and I'm gonna switch hands for a second because I think your the lighting is better this way. Um, you see how your black line meets your black hash line. So it's much easier for you to line up your letters that way. So again, I'm gonna put my stamp in my non-dominant hand, lightly drag that down. You're gonna feel that your stamp hits the ledge of that sticker guide. When you feel that, you're let, that your, your stamp is hitting that sticker guide, I want you to press down, put some pressure on your stamps. Don't be afraid, okay? Put some pressure down on your stamps and really anchor your hands. I'm gonna move this over to show you where my hand is resting, okay? My hand and my wrist is always resting on my table, okay? It creates an anchor. I'm gonna bring this down, line that up. Once I feel that restriction, let me pull this up a little bit. I'm gonna take my hammer and again, like we practiced before, if you wanna um, do more of a forceful hit because you want more of a bold letter, by all means, you could do that. I'm going to lightly tap mine, pull it back, and here is my first impression. Okay, if you're having an issue getting all of that impression in your metal, we are going to try a tilt and tap for the E. So I'm gonna come in now first with my design stamp. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna line that up and give it a nice tap. And there's my heart. I'm gonna come in with my E. Now with my E, that's a B. Okay, with my E, I'm gonna line it up, lightly drag it, okay? And I'm gonna do something that's called the tilt and the tap method. So what this does, if you're having an issue with getting a full impression, this is a way that you could stamp your letters and get all of that design in that metal. You could do the same for design stamps. If you've ever had a design stamp and you tried it, and let's say it's Hootie the Hootie Owl, Hootie the Owl, <laughs> you're only getting, Hootie with a bow. <laughs> you're only getting Hootie's feet and Hootie's belly, and you really want to get Hootie's eyes in the top of his head. So you would tilt and tap that. So what I mean by that is you're going to take your stamp, put pressure down on it, take your hammer, give it a nice hit. Then you're going to pull your stamp back, tilt it towards you, and hit it. Tilt it away from you and hit it. Side, side. Okay, then you're gonna pull it back. You're gonna see that you have the entire impression in your metal, okay? Now, I'm just gonna take my scrap again, just to go over it one more time. Um, a lot of people, when I show this method to them, and Jen and I have witnessed it a lot of times, I'm tilting and tapping, but I'm not getting an impression. Guys, you're not tapping around the stamp, okay? You're pulling back and hitting. 
So your hammer is always hitting that stamp dead on. Mm -hmm. You're moving your stamp. You're putting pressure on it and you're moving it. Okay. So tilting, tapping doesn't mean that your stamp is staying in one location and you're tapping around your shank because you're afraid to hit your fingers. I promise you, after your first blood blister, you will not be afraid of the hammer anymore, okay? Bring it back towards you, hit it. Away from you, side, side. And I promise you, you will get the full impression of what you're stamping, okay? And because you're hitting it numerous times, you don't have to be so forceful with it. So I'm gonna continue with my heart, all right? Then I'm gonna move on to my P. Any questions, Jen? Nope, not yet. All right. Again, I'm gonna hit it dead on, bring it towards me, bring it away from me, side, side, okay? There is my P. And now if you got comfortable with the tilt and tap, okay? I want you to try to do it in one fluid motion, okay? So again, I'm gonna come in with my S, bring that down, feel that ledge. I'm gonna hit it. And it's continuous taps. All right, then we're going to pull that sticker guide off and you're gonna see that your spacing is perfect and you're straight in a line across your blank. Rita, okay. Mona has a question that when she tilts and taps on occasion, she gets a shadow. What is she doing wrong? Okay, she's not putting enough pressure. What, what metal is she, what metal are you using? So I'll wait for her to answer. And Aluminum and copper. Okay. So your copper, guys, copper and brass is always, it's a harder metal. You're going to have to hit it harder. Okay. My suggestion when you're tilting and tapping is that you definitely have to tape down your blanks. Okay. Don't try to be a rock star right away and have that there and try to do it. Okay, you also want to take, you want to tape it down, tape it down on both sides. You also want to remember pressing your stamp into your metal and hitting it is giving you a very good footing in your metal. Okay, you definitely want a footing in your metal before you start going back and forth. Okay, and try it slow. Press down on your metal, hit it once, bring it back forward, side, side, work on scrap, work on aluminum bracelets. Aluminum bracelets are fantastic to practice on. Okay. It's all about technique guys. And once you learn it, you won't have to even use that tilt and tap anymore. Okay. Although I still use it sometimes. It's just, you know, once you use it, it's there. It's a tool. It's a technique that, that you now know and can use. Um, we have Melinda asking, are there any metals that you can't stamp on? Okay. So with this set, guys, um, the Impress Art sets that are available at Michael's in the colored cases, okay, are not rated for stainless steel, okay? You can do sterling silver, pewter, alchemy, tin, aluminum, brass, copper, fine silver, and 14 karat gold, okay? At impressart.com, we have something called a signature line, okay? They come in sleek black boxes, and you will see it. It'll say signature heartbreaker, signature uh, stargazer, so on and so forth. The black signature line is rated for stainless steel, okay? So you want to keep in mind that you definitely don't want to use these sets on stainless because you will ruin your set. All right. So now we're going to take our enamel marker. 
we're going to run that right over the impression. We're going to take our paper towel and it's dry. There's nothing on here, no antibacterial. We're going to dab that and we're going to lightly wipe. Now, if your enamel is not staying in your impressions, it's one of two things, okay? Now you watched me do it live. So we know that it stays in there. If your enamel is not staying in your impressions, it's one, you're wiping it off too soon. Two, there's something on your towel that's pulling that out. Or three, your impressions are not deep enough. Sometimes when you're stamping, and your impression is not deep enough. Okay, see that W? Your enamel is not gonna stay in that, okay? Because like we discussed before, this enamel is formulated to sit inside of your impressions. So you're getting something more like this, all right? So remember, if you're tilting and tapping, that's the best way to get all of your impression in your metal. And that is going to ensure that your, your enamel is gonna sit in your impressions and stay there, okay? So I've made my dot with my Sharpie, okay? And I am going to, oh, I just saw, hold on one second. So there's things I can encompass all metals. Um, yes, it can encompass all metals, but remember that it needs to be a jewelry related metal. So you can take a stamp set that's rated for stainless steel to a golf club or let's say- A Steel shovel. beam. <laughs> <laughs> a shovel. You know, I mean, we get all sorts of things. If you're stamping on, on stainless, it should be, Jen, the numbers are 306 to three 312. Okay, we have 304, 304 to 308. 304 to 308, yes. you can stamp on the, well, the 312 is stainless that's plated in the gold, okay. Okay. all right? So let's see, is there a dry time for the enamel marker? Okay, Katie, that's a really good question. And Jen and I have traveled all over doing yes. demos and trade shows all over the world. Um, and I could tell you that here in New York, in my studio, it's literally, a minute, okay? When I was in Korea, it took like three to four minutes. So it really depends on where you are. California doesn't dry as fast, okay? Uh, Arizona, super humid, it was very tacky. So you're gonna, it really depends on where you are, all right? Trial and error. So I'm gonna come in with my screw hole punch. And I'm going to line it up with the dot that I created with my Sharpie. And I'm just going to screw down. All right. But you definitely, no matter where you are, you want to blot your ink first, then lightly wipe, okay? Don't be aggressive with it. So there is my first hole. Now we're gonna move on to a tag and I know um, the project has a heart. If you're not a heart person and you are a tag person, definitely use your circles, okay? No hole punch needed for this, all right? Um, there is a wrong and a right here. You will see that this is finished much nicer than the opposite side. The opposite side is very cut. It's deboard, but not the way this was blanked out, okay? You'll see more of a curve on your finished side. So we're gonna come in again. And like I said, if you did not ruin your sticker, and what I mean by ruining is, I will show you. <laughs> Let's say you take your sticker and you go over by accident and you hit it and your stamp moves. That's no good anymore. 
okay? You wanna make sure that your sticker is nice and clean so your stamp sits right on top of it, okay? So I'm going to, again, take, I'm using my big stickers, so I'm just gonna rip that piece off. I'm gonna use one of my oranges as my center. I'm gonna place it by my hole, come down with it to where I want my font, okay? Move this down a little bit. So I'm right here, okay? And you know that my center is lined up straight in the center of my hole on top of my tag. So I'm gonna come in with an R, my ampersand, and my S. So again, I'm still using my black hash marks for my letters and any kind of design, including the ampersand, I'm using on my orange, okay? What's good about using a pencil is that if you decide that you don't like the person that you are making your piece of jewelry for, you could always erase it and put somebody else's initials there. What do you think, Jen? You like that, right? <laughs> All right, it's Thursday night, guys. <laughs> a little fun. We've survived another week, right? So I am going to pull out my R. Again, I don't have my center marked here. I'm gonna mark my center. How are we doing on time, Jen? You have about 15 minutes left. Oh, I better hurry this up, right? Let's see, I think my S has my line on it, okay? I also like to pull my stamps out of my box before I stamp anything, even a quote. And I always like to keep them on my non-dominant side in the order, I'll show you, in the order with the impress art facing up, okay? So when I go to grab it, I'm automatically stamping in the right direction, okay? The last thing you wanna do is <clears throat> Forget to look at your indicator marks, and then you have a backwards R or an E, all right? So again, I'm going to bring it down, lightly drag it, line it up with my corresponding letter on my sticker, give it a nice hit, come in with my ampersand, give it a nice hit. Same thing with my S, okay? Pull my sticker back, and there I have my initials and an ampersand. Now, if you wanted to spread this out a little bit, you can. So how you would spread it out is that you would do a black, black hash mark for your R, a black hash mark for your ampersand, a black hash mark for your other initial. In my case, it would be an S, all right? I like how it looks closer together so I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna color that right in. So Rita, we have Lightly Stephanie We Go have ahead. Stephanie asking, if you make a mistake, what happens? And can you cover that mistake? Okay, so if you make a mistake, we have something called a multifunction texture hammer, multifunction hammer, okay? And this hammer comes with four different heads three of which do texture. And I'm gonna grab that really quick just to do a quick demo. All right. Okay. Um, one that covers mistakes is the ball peen head, which is this right here. So this hammer, what I was saying, it has different heads. This screw, you loosen it and the head comes out and you're to please, we could replace it with other heads that are in that kit, okay? This is the ball peen hammer. So let's say you make a mistake. Let's, let's say I made a mistake on this one, okay? So I obviously know that I made a mistake before I colored it in, okay? You could take your hammer and texture over your entire disc, 
okay? So your metal's not completely lost, all right? You could always turn this. Obviously, you wouldn't have enameled it like I did, but you can go right over it with a kind of different kinds of texture, okay? And if you're lucky and you texture it really good, you'll be able to stamp again over it, depending on how deep you stamp your mistake. All right. So we're gonna move on to our date. So this is the strip. This is a one, uh, one and a quarter inch strip. It does not have a hole, okay? What you're gonna do with this is, you're gonna take your sticker guide. And I like to use two for this. I like to run one down my metal, okay? And I run my second across. So I know that my hole is at the top, okay? And I know that my three millimeter Arcadia font is a little bit wider than our, my usual three millimeters, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I want my number to be, I'm actually gonna do E, S, T, right? Established in 2005, all right? So I've used my black hash marks. Now what I'm going to do is, when we're stamping, okay, we drag down. If you don't wanna use two stickers, you're gonna take your letter, okay? Place it down and you're gonna drag it to the side, okay? If you feel comfortable doing that, you can. So I'm gonna show you both ways. Here is my E. Okay, if you're not comfortable with that, you can use a second sticker, come in on your orange hash line, just like that, and stamp your S. So it creates a nest for your stamp. You're bringing it down and you're tapping it. All right, so either way will work. Here is my T. All right. And then you have a choice. You could still go down with your letters, with your numbers, okay? Or I wanna do something a little bit different. Um, I want to turn my block, okay? And I'm still utilizing what I wrote on my sticker but I want my numbers to go a different way, okay? Just for a design aspect of it. So I'm taking my two, lightly dragging it down, lining that right up, giving it a nice tap. Again, another O, a zero, and a five. Now, for those of you that have a nine in your number, you're going to take a look. So on your six, you're gonna see the impress art. When you see the impress art, it's a six. You're going to turn it around on the back side of it, and this is going to become your nine. So if you have this set at home, you could always take your Sharpie and give it a nine at the bottom, okay? So you always know that you're stamping in the right direction. Now also, I'm getting older. This is just a little tip and trick. Um, Jen doesn't have this problem yet, but I can't wait for her to color in her stamps when she has this problem. I find it really hard to see sometimes the impression that is on the bottom of the stamp. So I like to take my Sharpie, 
color that in, lightly wipe it. And now you've gotten the dark, now it's nice and dark. All right. Look, Jen, I come up with something new every class. So there is your six. I'm gonna pull my sticker guide off, okay? And sometimes when you're stamping, especially on a softer metal, you're gonna get a really kind of wonky line on the bottom, okay? This is where you could do one of two things. This is where your multi-function hammer, see what that texture comes in. In that kit, let me grab that other one. In that kit comes a nylon head, okay? That looks just like this, all right? The nylon head is good because you can make sure, see how it's rainbowing? And you have that space underneath that your blank that your paper could go right through it. You're gonna take it and give it a couple of nice hits. Okay? And it'll straighten your metal right back out. If you don't have the multifunction temp the hammer, you could also use the back of your stamping hammer and lightly, and what I mean by very lightly, tap it right back into place, okay? So I'm gonna come in with my enamel marker, color that in. Now, another tip is if you walked away and left your enamel on your blank, what happens? Some people like to use a alcohol pad, antibacterial. I say you don't have to do that. Once it's dried and you can't get it off, take your marker, go over it again, lightly dab it and it will come right off. Okay, same thing with your Sharpie. If you hit that dot one more time, you could wipe that right off. All right, so I'm gonna put my dot. I'm gonna come back in. So the, the um, enamel markers do come in different colors. There is a brown available, a bluish green, a silver metal flake, and a gold metal flake. Lita, I just want to let you know that you have six minutes left until. Oh, seven. no. All right. The pressure is on. The pressure is on. All right. So we're going to put our mess up texture blank on there. So when you're doing jump rings, you want to make sure. That you are using two chain nose pliers. And how you're gonna open them is, you're gonna make sure that the opening is facing the ceiling. You're gonna use two of your pliers and you're gonna laterally twist it open, just like that, okay? Then you're going to put your blank on your jump ring and put your chain through, okay? I like to put my chain through before, you know, I, I like to just design it on the chain while I'm doing it. You can put your jump rings on and close your jump rings and then put them on their, your chain. I think we're on a time crunch, so I'm gonna do it this way. All right. Putting it right through, taking the other side and twisting it and you will hear, let's see if we can hear it. You will hear a click. Okay, you never want to pull your jump rings apart. Okay, because if you pull them apart, you compromise that metal in the center. And if your jump rings are pleated, you're going to crack that pleating off and you're going to see copper flashing come through. So you definitely want to laterally twist your jump rings as opposed to pulling them apart. 
Okay. And there we have it. Your family jumble necklace. All right, Jen, how was that for time? <laughs> I know we got, we definitely cut it close. I know there's another <laughs> class uh, tonight at seven. So I just want to make sure no one else is going to that class. Um, but I am going to bring you guys, actually I'm going to flip you guys around so I yeah. can yeah. see your um, So I just want to say everyone, I think I answered everyone's questions in the chat. I want to say Angie and Katie, we do have to get back to you. Um, so we will, Angie, uh, not Angie, Alicia, um, I know you're on social media, so I'm going to inbox you uh, tomorrow. But if I didn't answer your question, please feel free to email us at support at impressart.com and our customer service team will answer it or reach out to uh, Rita and I and we'll answer it. Or you can DM us on Instagram or Facebook and we'll answer the message in a timely manner. Um, but this is our favorite part of the class. Is I get to see what everybody's stamping. I and I know. Victoria, I see you and I see that you've been working because you've been on my screen and so has Angie. And let's see who else. Let's see. Brenda's watching. Alicia. Hello. Brenda, Claire. Hi, ladies. Oh, look at Sandy. There you are, Brenda. Hi, Alicia. Hi, Susan. We have Fern, Parker, Mary Joyce. How are you, Mary Joyce? So if you, Fern, guys, you guys did a fantastic job. Yes, if you guys stand, please show your piece um, up in the air so everyone can see. I know some people said they're ready in their pajamas, so they don't want to be on camera, but. Oh, so I'll let you in on a little secret. I have a t-shirt on, but I'm really in reindeer, reindeer, sweat, uh, reindeer pajama pants. <laughs> I'm, I'm come five o'clock, I'm done. So. Thank you so much, guys, for sharing with, um, with us. And thank you for taking time out of your evening and your schedules to take this class with Jen and I. Oh, nice we really job, Erica. We really appreciate um, you guys tuning in. And just keep in mind that we do have Facebook Lives on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 1230 in the afternoon. If you can't make it, you could always watch it on the replay and ask questions. Definitely leave comments. And um, Jen and I will definitely try to get back to each and every one of you. Yes. And All before right. we go, um, in two Thursdays on October 8th, uh, Eight is the next again one. at 5 p.m. Central Time, we are actually going more advanced. So anyone who's been tagging along with us for the past couple of months, we're going to be stamping a mandala cuff bracelet on copper. Yes, so uh, definitely. We'll using the antique markers. So anyone wants to see the colored markers, please tune in. And then on the 22nd of October, we are actually doing a men's jewelry. Um, so perfect for dads, grandpas, boyfriends, um, fiancés, anyone, children, um, anyone who you want to give a piece of jewelry to. All right. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us and we appreciate it and we will see you guys soon. Bye, guys.